To see the fully uncut version of this video, head over to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons. What's that like to live delicious? Chaos reigns. Please don't scream. Now, nah, Sid, don't you blame the movies? Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos for creators. What's going on? My name is John Joe Lyons and today I'm here to present to you my review for Shredder. Written by Craig Donald Colson and Greg Hewson and directed by Hewson, Shredder stars! All of these lot. At an exclusive secluded North American ski resort up on Mount Rocky Summit, brutal slashings, severings and beheadings on a group of teenagers are taking place and are believed to be the work of a mysterious skier dressed in black. Those of you that have been with the channel for a while know that along with my love for extreme unwatchable horror, I also have this obsession with shitty 90s scream knockoffs. The type where you might find a killer in a cool mask, some fun kills, and the type of whodunit narrative with the fun is guessing who the killer is. Films like Valentine, Urban Legend, Cherry Falls, The Pool, which is actually a film that I reviewed for the channel a lifetime ago. They all fall under this umbrella and for better or worse, I f love them. Shredder is another one of those gems with the unique selling point of this film being that it's so extreme. And by extreme, I mean the late 90s, early 2000s extreme. Like, no fear beanies, airwalk sneakers, and jeans that go over your shoes. Fun times. I really wish there was a skateboarding horror movie that I could cover, but there isn't one, so here we are, with an extreme sports snowboarding slasher. This movie's got me feeling super nostalgic for a period in my life before everything went to sh**, so let's not waste any more time. Get ready to see the snowboarders get carved. This is Shredder. The movie begins with shots of this ominous looking mountainside, complete with music ripped straight out of a Tim Burton movie. Cut to a skier and a snowboarder as they head down the mountain. Nice. The snowboarder, Chad, lands and it quickly becomes clear that the skier is actually chasing him. The rider looks like he's going to get away when we see the skier somehow ahead of him. Fingers hit the snow and we see in his other hand, Chad grips the skier's responsibility code. Too bad it didn't have don't get decapitated as a rule. Also, was he just holding that the whole way down, waving it at the skier between shots? The killer rips the rules out of Chad's hand and walks away as we see the mess left behind. Wow, check out the gape on that wound. I bet you know who it reminds me of, don't you? Most of these scream knockoffs usually cut away before the good gore starts, but here we are with the first kill pretty f***ing bloody. This movie might actually turn out to be good. Cut to a naked woman in a shower and enter her room as Michael Myers breathes his way inside. He looks at her underwear for a bit as the woman continues to have a sexy wash. Cut to the bedroom as Cole, who is the f voice of Aladdin, by the way, tries to get his girlfriend Kimberly into bed. She rejects him, saying she doesn't want to mess up all of her clothes, and Cole apologizes, saying he's just anxious about their weekend alone together. Honey, about that romantic weekend alone. No more RSVPs. Well, that's too bad. I think there's room for one more in the luggage rack. Here we meet our cast slash lambs to the slaughter. Kim's cousin Pike and her friends Skylar, Robin and Kirk. Cole is passive aggressive about all of the extra people, but Pike reassures them that they're just there to shred. Skylar then makes it clear that he's going to be the comic relief as he introduces everyone in the car. <laughs> Exterior, US 23, the fateful road, <laughs> the road to... The highway to destiny. This scene also serves as a nice opportunity for a bit of exposition as Kimberly explains her father bought the private ski resort that they're on their way to. They're going to check it out before it gets redeveloped. Skylar f about with Robin, causing her to spill her coffee so they pull over. Skylar tells Pike to document everything in the bathroom and she says she's going to film her piece so that he can sell it on the internet. Hey Pike, I actually know somebody who might be interested in that. The men then discuss whether or not Pike is gay with Skylar convinced she's just waiting for the right man. Moving on. Cut inside the bathroom as Robin moans about her sweater being ruined and then starts messing around with Kimberly on camera. 
Wait, so Pike is actually going to film stuff for Skylar in the bathroom? Outside, we see this fella creeping up to the bathroom door as inside Robin tells Kimberly to strip for Colt. She says she enjoys making him wait, calling him her little puppy as Pike pulls this face. Kimberly says Cole's not her breed and that she'd rather be getting it on with Chad. Good luck with that. Also, you're a c They leave and bump into the creeper Kristoff, who Robin is immediately into. <laughs> oh, you are getting all wet. You can tell. Cut to the car as Pike gets in and Cole complains about Kristoff joining them, saying that he could be a psycho killer. They close the trunk and the camera settles on a familiar pair of gloves as they drive away. Cut to the crew coming up on this snow shredder and as they blast past it, we see a death to snowboarders bumper sticker and the driver who Skylar calls an arsehole. <laughs> Cut to them arriving at Rocky Summit as Robert explains its history and Skylar calls the place haunted. Cole tries and fails to get the gate open as Robin asks Kimberly if she has a key. And then we cue the montage music. Cut to Pike, Kirk, Skylar, Robin and Kristoff snowboarding as Cole continues to struggle with the gate and Kimberly laughs at him. Then we cut to Kristoff and Robin making eyes at each other when he has an editing attack. Robin runs to make sure he's okay and he says he's cool, he just saw something. Cut back to Cole breaking open the lock and Skylar taking a leak. The killer then steps out from behind a tree as Skylar sees them, then spots the car and heads off towards it. Cut back to Cole and Kimberly as they arrive at their destination. Cole heads to the main door where he finds some random equipment before he's let in by Pike. Don't break in without it. Inside he asks who that stuff belongs to but Kimberly ignores him saying she's cold. Cut to Skylar telling the boys about the skier. She was so hot and she skied like a pro. This place is abandoned man, she's either a local or a ghost and either way, she's not begging to blow you. Cole asks why they've got so many boards and Skylar says they're pro samples. If they can get Kirk's name on them, they'll double in value. Skylar then goes on talking about what a legend Kirk is and how there's only one person standing between him and being in the Olympics. There's only one guy standing in your way. Charlie. Chad Charlie. Again. I think you'll be fine, mate. Kimberly joins them saying Chad is here but must be still out boarding. Kirk is less than pleased about this, but Skylar reassures him that he's gonna kick Chad's ass in slow motion. Skylar then suggests they go on a beer run in the most irritating way possible. Oh my god! Dude! We have a serious flaw in your social planning here. There is an immediate beer run required to ensure the survival of our species. I really want to like you, buddy. I really do, but you're making it super difficult to, you know? I hope you die. Kimberly then sweetly suggests Cole grab them some food while they're out, gives him a kiss and f***ed off. Cole invites Kristoff to join, but he declines, saying he's going to take a look around and keep the ladies warm. Cut to more establishing shots of the mountain. The wind's starting to pick up when... Oh. Okay. Cut to Cole and Skylar at the local bar buying beers where Skylar seems to be getting some serious American werewolf in London vibes. The bartender asks them if they're going up to Rocky Summit and they lie saying no. He says it's supposedly haunted and the weather changes every five minutes due to the angry spirits. Cole thanks him for the advice when they see the snow shredder driver from earlier watching them. He gets up and barges past Skylar as the bartender goes on. I'm telling you fellas for your own good, listen to me. Stay away from Rocky Summit. There's folks around here don't want you nowhere near that old place. It's dangerous. Evil. And here we have our harbinger, ladies and gentlemen. At this point, you might as well say that the summit's got a death curse. Now, yeah, let's not go up to the summit there. What goes up don't come down, you see. There's evil in them hills there, boy. Sometimes, come is better. Speaking of which, boy, would you like to lick my asshole? Skylar notices this lady giving him a look and we cut outside as he somehow confirms to Cole that she was the mysterious skier from earlier. The mysterious skier dressed exactly like the killer. So, she's the killer then? No, I mean, it can't be. Obviously not. That'd be fucking dumb. Skylar calls the woman mega spankworthy, and as they're about to drive away, the snow shredder comes to life. Cut to the crew back at the resort playing a drinking game as we see someone outside is watching them. There's a knock at the door which they answer finding the sheriff. He's none too pleased with the group saying they're trespassing and all under arrest but Kimberly begs to differ. I'm Kimberly Van Arx as in Van Arx Construction. That's great. 
I'm the sheriff, as in you have a right to remain silent. Robin then starts flirting with the officer, but he says the place is condemned and they still need to leave. Kimberly then switches on the charm and offers to get her ID, flashing the cop an eye full of arse. He continues to protest, getting more and more creepy with the girls before Cole offers him a bribe. He tells them to be out first thing in the morning and not to snowboard on the mountain as no one in town wants them there. I just don't want to see anything happen to you, you pretty ladies. Uh, you know, we never caught the killer, so you gotta get out. The group worry the mountain might be dangerous and so Kimberly gives them the backstory. Apparently when snowboarding was new the locals tried to have it banned but of course the riders ignored them. Then the accident slash murder happened when three drunk boarders caused a little girl to crash. She says the perpetrators disappeared and as the resort couldn't get any insurance after the tragedy her dad decided to buy it. Kirk and Skylar worry about the bad karma their presence may result in and that's when Kristoff pipes up. And they say the ghost of the little girl still wanders the slopes, seeking revenge. You were one of the boarders, weren't you, Chrissy, mate? Robin says she saw someone outside and thinking it's Chad, Kimberly goes out to investigate. She doesn't see anyone and goes back in when we see some scary feet pass us by. Cole asks all the fellas to come and have a look with him, but they all decline, so he just goes out alone. Cut to Cole outside when he's jump scared by Pike. They see another building with electricity and Cole says that he isn't going down there. They then have this wonderfully awkward conversation as Cole tries to tell Pike that he's okay with her being gay. My lifestyle? It's okay. I mean, I know. I understand. I'm with it. I like chicks too. <laughs> What's the f***ing problem? He's just trying to be inclusive. You like ham sandwiches. I like ham sandwiches. So we're friends now. The pair then head to the other building as we see the killer skier is watching them. Pike heads inside and is able to turn on the whole mountain's electricity. They celebrate as we cut to snow falling and more establishing shots set to a Danny Elfman score. For all the film's shortcomings so far, you cannot deny that the score is f***ing banging. It's composed by Alan Derian and looking at his IMDb, he seems to have done some really cool stuff on Black Christmas, Batman Mystery of the Batwoman and Afro Samurai to name a few. For such a low budget affair, the score is a real highlight. Cut inside as Kristoff wakes up from a sexy nightmare and then around the cabin as everyone sleeps. Robin wakes up and tries to get into Pike's pants saying she's not gay, just horny, but is rejected. Cut outside as the killer sabotages one of the snowboards and then back inside as Kimberly sneaks out of bed. She lights a candle and gets dressed all sexy like before heading downstairs. She goes to wake up Kristoff but finds his bed empty so pops her head outside and calls his name. She goes back in as the camera pans down to reveal the sheriff still hanging about. He then creeps off when suddenly he hears the dead little girl's screams. What the hell are you doing here? Hmm. <laughs> The lack of blood there's a bit worrying, isn't it? No, come on, I've got to have faith. That opening scene was amazing. I'm sure it's gonna get extremely violent any minute now. Cut back to Kimberly searching for the D as we see Kristoff hiding. She leaves and he goes up to this door finding it locked. Cut to Kimberly going into Pike and Robin's room and calling out for Kristoff before moving on. Robin then gets up and goes downstairs also looking for Kristoff. Damn, someone's getting laid tonight. It's that irresistible, vaguely European accent. Buongiorno, my name is Giorgio. Let me come in your mouth and eat on your boot. Robin checks Kristoff's bed when she's snuck upon by the European himself. He says he was searching the house looking for her and they have kisses. Cue the sexy music. Kimberly then appears at the door and laughs, leaving them to it. Here's a question. I wonder how many babies I could kill with a clear conscience if I knew at the end of it Kristoff was going to wipe his Robin juice soaked c down my face. 17? 17. Cut to morning as Pike flirts with Cole and Kimberly puts in her breakfast order. Can I get some eggs or something? Scrambled, not too runny. Pike says Kimberly must be the f of the century for people to have to put up with her and asks Cole to tell her when he finds out. Cut to Kimberly asking Kristoff where he was last night. They flirt when the others enter ready to ride. Kimberly says they should search for Chad but the others brush this off saying he's a survivor. They then head out to the mountain. Cut to Skylar and Kirk on a ski lift getting high as they see a sign telling them not to jump from the lift. Which of course Kirk takes as a challenge. Later. Oh man. Hey I hope you know your way back. The killer steps out from behind a tree and watches as we cut to Kimberly and the rest of the gang. Kimberly says snowboarding has completely ruined the fashion of skiing. Kristoff then offers to teach her, which she accepts. Cole tries to say that he'll teach Kimberly, but she says Kristoff has technique that he doesn't. It's a metaphor for his c Cole says they shouldn't separate, but Kimberly throws him a walkie-talkie saying maybe she'll call him sometime and heads off. 
Cut to Kirk stumbling across this free hugs emporium and taking a peek inside. The killer then appears and swings an axe into Kirk's board, which he stares at for far too long before catching an icicle to the chest. <laughs> The killer hacks up Kirk's board as we cut to Pike and Cole riding. Cole takes a tumble and Pike finds him apparently knocked out. He jump scares her and says that his bindings have been loosened. They then get back up with Cole saying they'll have to share a board, leaving his other board behind. Cut to Robin on the lift. We see a sign that wants to check for loose clothing when she's suddenly joined by the killer. They have a quick chat with Robin being an arsehole almost immediately. Are you deaf or just rude? My girlfriend owns this place, Mr. Friendly Guy, and we only share with people who don't totally suck. The skier looks at the board and points at the sign bearing one of the skiing codes of conduct. They start fighting with the killer pulling out the rule sheet that Chad had earlier when miraculously Robin wins sending the killer down into the powder. Cut to Skylar bumping into the blonde that he saw at the bar, Shelly. They chat for a bit with Skylar offering to teach her how to shred but she declined saying that she tried once and it wasn't for her. They go to the ski lift as we see Robin's scarf get her into a bit of bother. <laughs> Twas stupidity that killed the c- Cut to Pike and Cole still trying to get down the mountain and then to Shelly and Skylar as he tells her about how dope Kirk is and how his friend is buying the resort. Shelly tells him her dad, the bartender Bud, hates snowboarders saying they're irresponsible. She asks where they're staying and he says the old lodge. Shelly says that she can't stay there as she used to work there before her mum died. She then flashes her boobs for no real reason saying she likes it cold when she gets hot. She then puts his hand in her top and they get saucy. Cut to Robin still dead and then to Skylar and Shelly as they bump into Bud. He yells at her saying she should know better than to hang around with snowboarders and tells her to get home now. We see a quick shot of Kristoff watching this altercation go down as Bud tells Skylar he told them to stay off the mountain. Cut to Cole and Pike as she tries to radio Kimberly who's elsewhere struggling with her board. Cole asks her if she's seen Robin or Kristoff as in the background Robin's corpse passes them by. Hey, are Robin and Kristoff with you? No, they ditched me. That's pretty f***. Funny. Christoph appears and Kimberly asks him where he was, but he just says he has a surprise for her. Cut to another shot of Robin swinging in the wind, the last place you'll ever see, and then to Skylar catching up with Cole and Pike. He tells them about Shelly and her father before noticing a totally whack snowman. They head over to look closer, finding this. Your sense of humor is perverse, Skylar, so that is totally fake looking. <laughs> Looks like he's screwed. Because it's a screwdriver. They run back to the cabin and panic as Cole accuses Kristoff of being the killer. Pike says he was with them all night and it can't be him, but Cole isn't convinced. Listen to me. Your cousin is fighting for her life out there. And, and who the hell knows what he did to Robin Kirk? Pike tells Skylar they should go and search too as we cut to Kimberly and Kristoff about to get into a hot tub where she starts to playfully interrogate him about his true intentions on the mountain. She then steals his wallet revealing he's actually from Fresno. Uh, Chris Ramos, 217 Central Avenue, Fresno? Fresno. Christoph admits that his parents owned the place before the accident. He says he needed to get into the lodge, but before he could say anything else, Kimberly gets naked and invites him into the hot tub. Cut to Pike and Skylar searching and then to Robin's body. Which I am not getting tired of, by the way. I genuinely hope that the last shot of this film is Robin hanging up there frozen solid. Cut to Cole on the search and then to Christoph's ass as he gets into the hot tub. Christoph says he's a killer, but the story isn't what they said with the ghost girl. He says he thinks his friends were murdered, which Kimberly ignores in favor of his d Cut to Pike and Skylar coming up on the murder cave and then back to the hot tub as Christoph explains the accident and says he thinks his friends were killed for it. That he dated Shelly and that the dead girl was her little sister. Kimberly then shoves his head under as we cut to Pike and Skylar searching the cave for Kirk. And inside they find a whole lot of carefully placed clues. The skiing rules leaflets, newspaper clippings about an Olympic champion opening the ski area, drunk driving teens killing the resort owner's wife, snow surfing being banned on the mountain, a local girl dying on the mountain, a bunch of trophies and a hatchet. Pike tells Skylar to get a shot of the life-size doll but but when he gets closer, they realize it's a frozen but somehow still floppy corpse. I don't think that's a dog. Whoa, oh my God. It's like preserved. Pike then turns to leave when the killer appears at the door. <laughs> and then it turns out, wouldn't you know it, Skylar knows Kung Fu. Go, go, go. Skylar goes back for his camera and catches a hatchet to the leg when Pike fights the killer off, eventually swinging her board into their face and knocking them out. Cut to Kimberly and Kristoff in the hot tub. Yeah. Cool. What the hell are you doing? 
I, I swear to God, it's not what it looks like. Oh, oh, is it not, babe? Let me guess. You lost your keys in your vagina and Kristoff was trying to get them out of his c Anyway, Cole storms off and Kimberly gives chase as Kristoff hangs back, presumably waiting for the first opportunity to finish himself off. Cut to Pike and Skylar bumping into Cole and Kimberly and saying they just had a run in with a killer. Pike then says if Kristoff was with Kimberly, there's no way it could be him. Cut back to Chris, clearly post w as the killer approaches. I, I didn't say anything, okay? Look, don't do this. Don't, don't do this. Oh God, no! Oh! Truly exquisite acting there. Bravo. The survivors hear the screams and run back to the hot tub finding Chris dead. Cole finally accepts that he isn't the killer and we cut to them finding their car engine destroyed. Kimberly screams and Cole drops Skylar as they rush off to find the bodies of their friends in the snow. Cut to night as the gang arrive at the lodge and deduce the killer's motive. He's killing them for breaking the skiing rules. Cole and Pike then take Skylar upstairs as Kimberly cries on the sofa with a fire poker. Cut to Pike and Cole trying to pierce Skylar's leg back together as downstairs Kimberly walks around with a flashlight looking for weapons. She manages to break open that locked door Chris was looking at earlier and inside she finds the bodies of the other snowboarders. She runs upstairs and tells the others they need to leave, but Cole tells her not tonight as Skylar is f***ed and they don't have a car. Cut outside as the killer walks around and Cole tries to fix the car when Pike comes out to see how it's going. Um, Cole, just in case we don't get another chance. Pike then notices something about the engine and says she'll be right back before running off. Cut to the killer using a key to get into the lodge and Kimberly with all of her weapons by the fire. The killer creeps behind her, goes upstairs and enters Skylar's room where he doesn't really seem that bothered at all. You know you can't kill me because I'm still a virgin. Huh? Huh. Cut downstairs where Kimberly is drinking when she hears the walking above. That Skylar kill was pretty f***ing lame, man. Where was all the blood? <laughs> Oh, f yeah, man. The blood starts pouring into a grate which drips down onto Kimberly's face as she screams and runs away. Cut outside as Pike and Cole try to get the car running and then back inside as Kimberly runs from the killer. She finds Chad's body in the cupboard and apparently not up for going outside where her friends are, decides to hide in there. The killer goes downstairs and Kimberly runs to get a walkie-talkie before heading back to her hiding place. She calls Cole and when he answers, the killer hears her and rushes to the cupboard. They struggle with the door for a moment before the killer starts ripping it apart with the fire poker. And then we get this last minute bit of genius as the fire poker accidentally pierces Chad's head. <laughs> That's pretty f***ing awesome, man. This movie just went from good to great. The killer suddenly backs away from the door and we cut to Cole still with this confused look on his face. Cut back inside as Kimberly tries to make a run for it and fails. Kimberly? Kimberly, is that you? Cole finally goes inside and discovers a blood trail leading to the basement, which he follows finding Kimberly. Oh, well, f you too, Kim. Cole then tries to leave, but the killer has blocked the door. Cut outside as Pike gets the car started. The killer tries to jump in, but Pike reverses, kicking him to the ground. The killer then gets up, and when they start to walk towards the car, Pike tries to run him down, but f up and crashes. The killer then deals with her. <laughs> Cut to Cole getting free and finding Pike's dead body. And she is dead, isn't she? Yeah, look at her, hole in her head, eyes wide open. She's definitely dead. Yeah, let's let's all remember that. Cut to Cole jumping on a ski lift and screaming about how irresponsible he is, trying to go the killer who in turn stops the lift, leaving him stranded. Cole then sees the killer on a snowmobile as they pull up and start firing a rifle at him. He drops down through a tree and hides as the killer searches for their prey. Cole then bursts out and spears the killer off their snowmobile, steals the rifle and takes aim. He tells him to lose the mask, revealing Bud, Shelley's dad. He says he told her to stay away from them and moves forward when Cole opens fire, realizing the gun is loaded with blanks. He then knocks Bud out and rides down the mountain as Bud immediately gets up and gives chase. That is until this happens. Cole calls out on the radio to see if anyone's left but gets no response. Cut to later as he walks down the road eventually arriving at the town. He goes into the bar finding it deserted then heads through out the back where he finds the snow shredder. <laughs> he 
somehow can't climb up the snow walls either side and we see the driver has had their throat slashed and the real killer is now behind the wheel. They then take off their mask, revealing... Oh, it's Shelly, right? The bird who let Skylar feel her up on the lift. I mean, she, she was only in like two scenes. I know Christoph said that she was his ex-girlfriend in that one scene, but other than that, she was only in like two scenes. And kind of an underwhelming reveal. Sort of wanted it to be one of the friends. Who's the Shredder now, huh? Hey, Shred this bitch! No, hold on a minute. She was dead. We all fucking saw it. She was fucking dead. And what? Now she's fine. And with a shotgun, no less. I suppose the idea is she got it from behind the bar, but when? Anyway, Shelly lands in front of the shredder and goes to kill Cole, but Pike has another idea. That was fucking amazing. Pike then rushes down and turns off the shredder, saving Cole. They kiss and we get this amazing final line from Cole as the film fades to black. So you know, I'm liberal. I mean, if you want to be like bisexual or something, you know, bring chicks home, that's cool with me. The end. Well, that was equal parts awful and amazing. What a bloody good time. Shredder is a film that I really admire for its courage to buck the trend when it comes to films of this nature and actually give us not only a perfectly fine 90s slasher but also deliver on the gore. And while I call this a 90s slasher, I also appreciate the clear 80s influence in the characters, pacing, villain backstory and location. The story is as simple as it gets with a group of teens heading up to a remote cabin to snowboard and being killed off one by one. Things are made more complicated by the addition of the Kristoff character in his subplot as he tries to find out what happened to his friends. It's unfortunate that he never gets to find out though as his attention turns toward Kimberly but well fair enough. While the villain's motivation is clearly explained through dialogue and cave clues it was a shame that the Shelley character wasn't more interwoven with the group. It wouldn't have made sense seeing as her and Chris dated previously and would have recognized each other but still. The fun of these movies is that the killer is part of the group so when the reveal happens it packs more of an emotional punch. The fact that Shelley ends up only being in two scenes and dresses exactly like the killer is a bit of a letdown. Also quick side note was there actually a ghost girl? The sheriff seemed to hear her scream before he got the screwdriver to the face so what's that all about? Perhaps the filmmaker would explain that that was actually the wind but they made it sound like a scream to add ambiguity to the story maybe i don't know in terms of the performances they're surprisingly bearable for a low budget slasher movie everyone's likable in their own way with the exception of kimberly but obviously that's intentional they all do their best with the material and really there isn't a weak link in the group kurt could have done with a bit more development but aside from that they're all perfectly fine well maybe apart from Kristoff. His death scene was hilarious. Then there's the gore and I've got to say I'm so pleased that this isn't the bloodless PG-13 slasher movie it could so easily have been. There are a billion of those movies out there and everything here screams that it's going to be another one to add to the pile but for some wonderful reason the filmmaker takes the bold approach and gives us some pretty interesting kills with a good few buckets of blood poured on top. They're not all winners but my favourite has to be Skylar. When that tape deck opened up and flooded the room with his blood I was overjoyed. Nice little surprise there. Presentation wise they try their best with what they have but it can't be denied that the film ultimately looks like a TV movie. I don't know if it's all the dialogue being dubbed or the colour grading but no matter how much it tries it never ever feels cinematic. The opening kill could have easily been the opening scene to an episode of Diagnosis Murder and I wouldn't have been surprised. The only element that elevates itself above TV movie status is the score. As I said in the breakdown, I really love the score to this flick with it giving me some serious Tim Burton and Danny Elfman vibes throughout. They must have got the composer cheap on his way up in the industry because I don't mind saying it was way above everything else in this movie quality wise. All in all, I really enjoyed Shredder. It's an honest to goodness stab at creating an original slasher story that emulates both 80s and 90s slasher tropes while delivering the gory goodness on a minuscule budget with characters I didn't immediately despise. Though it's unlikely we'll ever see a sequel, if one did come along, I wouldn't be upset about it. It's a recommendation from me for viewers this winter time, preferably during a cold and dark night as fresh snow falls outside your window. So that was my review for Shredder. What do you lot think? I'd call it a sh show, but I'm impressed, honestly. This could so easily have been one of those bloodless PG-13 slashers, but instead they decided to pull out all the stops and give us the gory goods. 
Speaking of which, if you want to see all of the blood and guts completely uncut and early, head over to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons. There you can gain access to the uncut version of this video, plus others with more stuff coming all the time. we got slasher comic breakdowns, Patreon exclusive reviews, commentaries coming soon, and of course the Discord. We're so close to hitting our first target as well, and after we do that, we're going to be moving to fund a short film. It's all very exciting, I assure you. And all of this can be yours for as little as a dollar a month. You can pledge more, I really appreciate it, as I'm trying to fund an expedition to go looking for the abominable snowman. And off. So yeah, one more time, patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons. We'll see you there. So that's it for another week. Like the video, leave a comment and click subscribe if you haven't already. My name's John Joe Lyons and she was f***ing dead. Look at her. Look. She's f***ing dead. She's not passed out, is she? Ridiculous.